Hello and welcome back to OT the podcast. We're here to talk about watches, time, and how to spend it. I'm Andy Green, and joining me today is Felix Schultz from Live from Geneva, live from my hotel room on the ground. Uh, yeah, it's 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 very early in the morning uh, at the moment. It's good to speak to you, Andy. How are you? Fantastic. This is like a live cross, except it's pre um, well, it's recorded earlier in the week, the day yeah. after. Yeah. Day, this is day two of the fair. So you've seen. Yeah, I'm about to. I'm about to. After I finish, I don't know if this is a glimpse behind the curtain. Mm. After I wrap this up, I'm going to go smash a quick couple of coffees, jump mm-hmm. on a shuttle bus to the Pal Expo, and uh, head into day two to see some more watches, Andy. I love it. Well, what have you seen? Uh, what have you seen so far? How's the fair been for you? Quite a lot. But uh, before we talk about what we have seen and what's exciting and what, what's mm. got people hyped, I think we need to mention this week's charming and delightful sponsor tag hoyer uh, oh, yes. they're celebrating the 60th anniversary of the carrera that's a big deal for them we'll talk about that in a second you can find out more about them at tag mm. first i mean it's great andy honestly it's uh my first road show since 2019 and as, as yeah. regular listeners know i've sort of been a bit a bit up in the air about it like oh you know it's it's uh I don't know, what do you call it, like pre-flight jitters or something. Mm. But uh, it's it's really interesting to be back and my first time at the new format too. You know, the kid that didn't want to go to school camp and then finally did and had a lot of fun. I mean, yes, but I'd like to also <laughs> add in the fact that I'm professional about it and it's my job. So. <laughs> <laughs> professional tantrums. Uh, yeah, <laughs> pays the bills. <laughs> Have you seen, yeah. have you bumped into anyone interesting? Any of the old old friends? Old oh, I've, run into, I've run into lots of people. I mean, that's honestly, that's that's the the big thing for me is, is catching up with lots of people. I caught up with some some friends last night and, you know, it's, uh, you know, I, I sat next to the, the team from, you know, sort of the Oris Australia team was at the, the table next to us and it's it's that whole small world thing. You run into, you know, people you know on the internet and, I've got some WhatsApps to catch up with other people, but it's it's a vibe, you know. How, how's it been from the view from afar? You know, it's funny. We kind of went from uh, yeah, these may these chaotic watch fairs. You go over there, be exhausted for a week, and then come home to sort of this hybrid thing of like a few things popping up here and there, local events, but mostly online with the pandemic and all these brands sort of sending out their releases. Some were sort of, you know, focused around core dates, but for the most part, we had a couple of years of them just sending things out and you kind of being able to give it more thought. It's been really overwhelming not being at the fair and just trying to like take things in because, I mean, some brands send you like seven emails back to back with for each model sure. and it's just super overwhelming. Uh, a little bit of FOMO because you kind of, yeah, it is the thing where you walk down the hall and you see, you know, guys, you, guys and gals you chat to online in the watch industry in the world yeah, uh, and you can just bump into them and say hello and get a photo. It's sort of, so I sort of, sort of do miss that. Um, yeah. And hey, uh, I don't mean to cut in, but the, the FOMO, I understand that because I'm also saying, oh, I just ran into your mate and all that sort of stuff. But our Discord, I'm sort of dumping photos in there mm. when I can of like just, um, you know, view, like what the booths look like, random stuff, like a few crappy watch shots, all that sort of thing. So... Jump in our Discord if you haven't. It's a good week to do it. Uh, you should post up some of your watches and wonder gifts. Show the people what you're getting. I will. I mean, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. It's been pretty. Yeah, it's. I, I think it's lighter than in the past. I think they've sort of streamlined that uh, a little bit. Like, uh, especially like as the the veneer with the gifts is also their quote unquote press kits. And mm. our press kits are online, so I think there's less of a expectation around that. Less branded USBs. But I have, I've had some lovely chats and I've run mm. into – one person I've run into a few times uh, is uh, Tag Hoyer's Heritage Director, Nicholas Bybeck. Love it. But I have, I've got a, um, a, a, an interview scheduled with him in a few days, but I have already seen the, the bulk of the Tag Hoyer novelties and they're pretty <laughs> good, Andy. Yeah, a lot of positive feedback. I mean, in our Discord you just mentioned a lot of people kind of – laying praise down for the Carrera, but yeah, tell me, tell me about them. So, so the main sort of thing for them is there, there are some dial, you know, let's get this out of the way first. There's some dial variations on the Aqua Racer, like two tone mm. and solid gold ones that look pretty great. Like I've always been a big fan of the, the Aqua Racer. Um, so they're, they're good. There's a new, there's a couple of new plasma models that I haven't seen IRL yet. 
mm. um, bracelet version but, of the uh, of the plasma, which I can only imagine doubles the price. Yeah, I mean, I think the you know the entry point there is at a zero or two, uh, yeah. but but they're they're Looks pretty cool. cool. But the main ones, I think, the ones that everyone's excited about are the new the new Carreras, um, which they're sort of four in the three. No, yeah, three. Sorry, my mistake. Um, there's the 39 millimeter model, and mm-hmm. the thing about it is. It's a significant redesign. Like you'll find out when you, you see them, you know, locally, Andy. It's like a really domed glass box, sort yep. of sapphire crystal. It's like a really um, deep and rich dial that mm. uh, they've really sort of highlighted, like legibility as being, you know, core to the Carrera DNA. Mm. There's 39 millimeter model in blue and 39 millimeter model in inverse panda, which is a, a nod to the one of the, you know, the core historic references. Yep. And then yep. there's, you know, a Turbion as well. Um, but it's a major update. And it, what I think it does the most impressively for me is it's not like a retro reissue. It's not... No, it feels modern. Yeah, it feels modern, but it's it's obviously inspired by the past and, you know, paying homage to that. But it's not, it's not you know, like a lot of watch brands will do it. They'll make, you know a model, a specific model to, you know, sort of, you know, celebrate their history and their heritage and, you know, then go on with the rest of their business. But this is like the update to the core collection. I don't think it's, it's not going to replace the sort of the Carrera, the the sporty model and the other Carreras Mm. they've been working on, but it's really sophisticated. It, it, It sort of trots a really nice line between modern and heritage. There's also a 42 millimeter, Carrera that's like a really kind of edgy take on it um, with that. Yeah, sort of- I think that's, I think that's the, uh, that's the other design. I think that the Carrera Sport or I, I'm, I'm, I should have remembered this, but is that the one with the colors? Like it's got, it's bold. got the kind of, yeah, it's kind of like a graduated orangey red in a yes. circle. Um, yeah. So that doesn't have the new, that new glass box style design. No, 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 no it, it doesn't. still looks pretty sick. Yeah. And then they've got the Carrera date as well in 36 which looks to be a pink and a green dial on offer. There's a, yeah, there's like four different dials. I uh, I had a, I think I sent you a picture of the pink, you know, mm. um, but it was off one of the sort of the the women that worked at Tag Heuer's wrist. There oh, yeah. was no way. I, I I don't think I was getting that around my thumb. Like, but it, <laughs> it's a cool dial. It's a really really cool look. Um, and we'll have more. So I'm going to talk. Like I said, we're going to talk to Nicholas, uh, and that'll mm. be some chats coming in the next few weeks. And I think we'll do probably a deeper dive into the career. Yeah, I think so. I mean, there's a whole bunch of new movements we've not even had a chance to talk about across these lines. Yeah. There's a bunch of That's bunch it. Of I think stuff. there's, they're doing impressive things on a lot of fronts and it's a cool, it's, 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 yeah, it's really good to see what they've been up to. Yeah. Solid. Okay. Um, what else? What else can we talk about, Felix? Well, I mean, there's another brand that people typically talk about a lot. Um, ah, yes. At these sort of things. Rolex. Rolex day one with Rolex is sort of the it's the brand everyone's watching. Um, interestingly, uh, <laughs> we were t- we were talking about this, but someone someone somewhere must have messed up their time zones. I feel with um, with some Google publishing and a few few new releases got pulled through a little bit early, and mm. and dampened the surprise a little bit. But overall, Felix, quite an interesting year. I mean, I'm pretty across what's come in and what's gone out. Uh, so you've got I, a new Daytona, uh, so new yep. movement, new case, led to a bit of a new kind of dial makeup. There's a anniversary Platinum Daytona, which has actually got an exhibition case back, which is the first time Rolex have ever done that. Quick question. Is it a mm. new move? I know this, uh, you might be more across this. Is it a new movement or is it an updated movement? Have they refined the existing one? Uh, website says new movement across the Daytona line. Mm, I, I, yeah, look, look, I haven't seen them yet. I'll ask the question, Andy. Um, put, put the hard but question I, to I them. I thought it was like a, you know, we've changed, we've made it more efficient and mm, the Chrono Energy escape and sort of thing. Kind of feature they have. Yeah, I mean, good question. But with the, the Platinum Daytona, so that's for the anniversary of the Daytona, obviously, clear case back with uh, Côte de Genève finishing, um, which is yeah, kind of interesting. And I guess what Rolex have done this year to kind of celebrate, I think it's the 70th anniversary of the Daytona. Uh, they also launched a new website the same day that everything went up. So Jesus, I can't imagine the stress that the various teams were, you know, kind of feeling getting everything ready. Um, yeah, but yeah, sure. what else? At, with those Daytonas, the John Mayer, which is the green dial, um, yellow gold went, the blue dial, white gold went, Milgauss went. Yeah, uh, Milgauss went. 
that, so that's out, which weirdly yeah, Adam Scott, who's a pretty good friend, if not ambassador of Rolex, did a tribute post the day of, like yesterday. Um, of the Milgas. Yeah, Milgas forever was the caption. So, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah, I'd, uh, what else though? GMT. The so biggest this is surprise. One. Yeah, oh, go. you go, sorry. No, I was going to say the GMT, two-tone GMT, full gold GMT uh, with a Jubilee uh, bracelet, black dial, looks pretty cool. They look sick. I've seen those through glass. The mm. biggest surprise for me, uh, and I've actually, I, I, I don't know if you've seen this, uh, we've started TikTok as well, Andy. Yes. Uh, we should link that up. I'm trying to work out TikTok while at Watches and Wonders. It's terrible. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, uh, I did a quick video of the new, the new Cellinis that aren't Cellinis. That's a big surprise for me. Yeah. So the 1908. Yeah. They look good. But like, no Cellini. Yeah. I think they're the kind of the sleeper. It's like a return to the dress watch. The sleeper dress watch. You know, it's been coming back the last few years and Rolex have just come in and said, hey, we'll do that um, and see what happens. Yeah. So uh, another thing that's I think probably worth mentioning um, to you, Andy, I wasn't sure what the layout of, of this sort of Watches and Wonders was going to be like, but mm. it's pretty, it's, they've done, it's quite intuitive for me because if I turn left, it's like SIHH. If I turn right, it's essentially Hall One at Basel World, like the ah. same buildings, the same layout, everything. Okay. Yeah, like they've just moved their their booth. Picked it up over. and moved it. Yeah, love yeah. it. Uh, Titanium Yachtmaster also came in, which is cool. Uh, everyone, everyone expected that. Yeah, no surprises there at all. In forty-two millimeters, so I think a few people are disappointed by that. Uh, Explorers back in forty mils, cool. Uh, I think it's better than thirty-six. So does Stephen Pulvere. Um Day date, the day date emoji, fun love watch. You see that the the puzzle dial. Is that is uh, that what's called? Yeah, I I like the one with the balls more. Is that Shop Levee uh, enamel as well? That the, yes, yeah. I'll see the op with the kind of the design balls on yeah. it, different colors. That's yeah. fun. But this day date, the wheel, the date wheel says uh, is, is 30 emojis and then the day Whoa. wheel says love like and yeah it, there's no That's hectic <laughs> it's pretty hectic it's kind of yeah how and then it's got rainbow how did that get past setting. rolex i uh, this is what they're doing for fun this year that's, uh, that's i can't wait to see it that's really exciting um I, I had no idea about that until you just mentioned that that's cool yeah, it's an off catalog. Um, There's a few other off catalogs that you should. I'm going to tell you to ask for uh, being sub gems. Yeah, I've got a bit of time with them tomorrow. I think so. Yeah, hopefully so, we'll make that happen. So make sure you ask for the for the new kind of Sapphire Daytona and then the GMT Lefty, the whatever we call it, the Sprite. That's being gem set too, apparently. Mm, I'll so, see. You know, I'll see what uh, what they're willing to show me. It's always a you know a negotiation. But use use that use your power uh, and. Then I guess you go next door to Tudor afterwards. Have you seen, you've seen Tudor, right? Yeah, quickly. I had a, um, as they call, a touch and feel session, uh, which is just like the press release. You know, oh, not the press release. You get the press presentation and you, you get like 10 minutes with a bunch of other people with some watches, which is fine. But I've got another sort of more in-depth session coming up. Uh, there, Yeah, you tell, me, you tell me what you liked and I'll see tell you if I wore them and what I thought of them. Okay, so... New Black Bay GMT line. The white one, yeah? Yep. Looks nice. Looks. I mean, uh, no surprise to anyone, I'm a sucker for a polar dial. This is, it's obvious. It's a, it's a real, it's a real good looking watch. Yeah, the, the white works. Sometimes white gets a little bit, a little bit lost. It's not, it's not like crisp white. It's, it's okay. not like sort of, it's sort of a, like a, uh, it's got a bit of a grain or a metallic sort of look to it. It's, it's, I guess you'd call it opaline, um, mm. silvery white. Uh, it's really nice. Okay. And then, so basically the focus this year has been on the Black Bay. So the 31, the 36, the 39, and the 41. Yep. The, so the OG Black Bay, that's been kind of updated, hasn't it? There's sort of a... Yeah, they've, they've tweaked the ergonomics of it. Like the bezel is thinner and slimmer. The biggest I change finally? that I... <laughs> Sorry, what was that? Finally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they've a bit of you know wearability update. I guess you'd yep. call it. Yeah. The most impressive thing I saw, and I I, I just sort of strapped it on and noticed that uh, they had like a five link bracelet, like a you know sort yep. of ju- jubilee styles uh, Tudor bracelet that was really really nice. Jubilee esque, yeah. So then there's yeah. the Black Bay fifty four. Thirty seven millimeters heritage, no date, traditional bezel layout, really nice, Andy. This is a new edition, yeah. This is a brand new edition. Uh, Metis certification as well across, I think, all of this stuff. Is that correct? 
Yeah, uh, not all of it, but I think they're leaning that way. The other thing that's interesting, so their video um, and a lot of their focus because they had some events before Watchers and Wonders was their new facility in Lurk. Yeah. So they've got a brand new building. And they had press in for the first time. They opened the door to people going in making videos. Adrian Barker's in there filming. Like that is a yeah. massive deal. And I'll see if we can find the video, but like their video, their press video was from the perspective of the factory as like an autonomous like showing off the technology. And I'm just, I was talking about it to someone last night. I'm really fascinated mm. about, it's a really different like narrative shift from watchmaking as like artisanal craft and, you know, old men in the Swiss mountains making things to cutting edge technology, you know, robotic production lines. It's, it's really interesting. Yeah, no, sort of flexing that robot um, feature as well. I will say the Bike Bay 58 is still around. So this... This new, this is an entirely new, this 54 is an entirely yeah. new kind of... Yeah, which entry. makes sense. Why would you get rid of the 58, you know? That's sort of a direct nod to the sort of the smaller sizes from the you know, 80s and 90s, but it seems to look pretty cool. It seems to pretty, you know, wear pretty well. I think there's sort of due to maybe talking to, you know, a larger demographic with this model, which is which yeah. is quite nice. It, it would look good. I, you know, it, it reminded me, uh, because it's essentially what it is, of the old mid-size subs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that would... If if you were a woman that wasn't happy with the, the you know the regular black bays, this mm. is the one to go for as well. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, a little bit of action in the Judah Royale, but probably nothing worth diving into too much. Um, just not dial variants, chocolate and a salmon. I think were thrown in the mix. Keeping uh, keeping it thematic with uh, you know the the, the hall layout. Are you mm. across what Patek Philippe did? Much a bit. of yeah. So Patek were pretty restrained. I think this year, I think they, del- you know, they dropped maybe, you know, two dozen watches, maybe not even, um, some heavy grand comp stuff, like with some yep. gem setting, uh, yep. then a pretty big focus on kind of pilots, Calatrava. So there was a couple of nice sort of white gold models, a blue and a green, like an olivey green with kind of match straps, mm. which the- look hefty and cute. Yep. Uh, but the focus looks to be, I mean, I think the real standouts are going to be the white gold Calatravas. So they did three, a yellow, red, and a blue kind of accented pieces that have matching sporty looking straps that's sort of carbon fibery vibe on the dial, carbon fibery sort of weave on the, on the strap. Uh, and they've done yeah. three of those in white gold. And that tells me maybe they're sort of speaking to their kind of sporty customers with a language that isn't Nautilus or Aquanaut. Yeah, and I, f- I find it interesting that they dropped them as like a trilogy of colour variants, whereas in the past it would have been a pretty s- staggered release, whereas them to like, it's sort of like this is a whole mini collection sort of thing, which I find a- an interesting move from them. Yeah, really slim as well. Uh, they actually call it, so it's 9.7, uh, 9.1 millimetres thick. They actually call it a carbon motif, so me, me comparing it to carbon fibre is what uh, Terry once yeah sure yeah yeah they've had that carbon motif on other dials before in the past I think. yeah i didn't know it was called i didn't know it was called that mm. uh 40 I, mil I, i'd forgotten until then <laughs> white gold I, you know i imagine these going to be around 40 grand or something sort of in yeah it's it's not your it's not your grandpa's calatrava um sorry about that sure it's not your grandpa's was calatrava that, was that, uh was that terry stern literally it's tilly and terry uh mm. calling up to to have a have a, have a chat i'll cut it out um. Anyway, hey, so uh, I'm not seeing Patek. Full, full, full disclosure. Uh, it's you know, uh, a bit tricky to get into them, and B, I'm okay not seeing them. You know. Well, you know, the only other you thing of note was a new Aquanaut, kind of a matte petroly blue dial. Um, some, is an annual odd calendar. design layout. Annual calendar kind of crammed in the middle of the dial. I think maybe we're so used to seeing a chronograph that was a, has a bit of a nicer proportion. It's an aquanaut. It's precious metal. It's a nice color. It's going to sell. We can gripe around a, the placement, but it, it won't make a difference. Uh, but, you know, quiet, quiet year. So I'm not seeing uh, uh, Patek, but I am going to be spending a lot of time in the next couple of days with a brand that has not had a quiet year. Of the Grand Maison of Cartier. I love it. So my my Cartier watches and wonders kind of yep. first touch point was was Waco Revolution. Exciting. Your your dear employer. Uh, yep. throwing on a tank normal, saying it's a platinum, hundred pieces, 
And in typical typical kind of way fashion, he's like, I'm trying to work out how to get one. <laughs> um, it looks pretty cool. He's, uh, what, what is it? He's manifesting it by saying he's manifesting, it on video on the internet. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's kind of uh, aligning the stars. Uh, interestingly, Wade did say that this is like... It's been a while. It's been a hot minute since they've done a platinum bracelet, if they've ever done a platinum bracelet. Yeah, it's it's the classic like brick or I think Figaro is a, another way of calling it. But um, yeah, that's the hot one for me, the bracelet. I wasn't super into that watch. I thought, oh, this isn't this doesn't seem like anything special. And then I kind of gave it five minutes and looked at it. And I thought, no, nah, this is there's a pretty cool move. There's a pretty cool yeah, move. Yeah, uh, that, so that's their Privé collection. There's also um, skeletonized versions as well, which are really interesting because if you look at – they've done it uh, – it's a 24-hour display yep. and the top of it is like a sun motif and the bottom, which will be the night hours, is a moon motif, which is kind of cool. Mm. Mm. Uh, but, okay, you can't get the Cartier Privé, Andy. You can get another piece that's more regular production. What are you going for? I mean – what a place to start. Uh, what about the Tank Louis Cartier? That looks... Which ridiculous. one? Uh, the one with the sort of the disco ball dial. The mosaic yeah, dial. So that's incredible. That's, I think, I can't wait to see that. It's, and it's a really smart move. It's a really smart move because it nods to like what they're capable of in like Metiers de Art, like with mosaic. But this is a metal dial and I assume it's not incredibly tricky like it will be done you know through laser etching or some sort of process like it's a commercially yeah. produced one but it still gives that look it's like got three different golds on it at least there's another one that has like a, a grid pattern it's it's so creative i'm really into it yeah shimmering they also did some precious metal cartier musts so that sort of green enamel and burgundy got some uh, some precious metal treatment Yep, yep. Uh, are they must or are they tank Louis? Car- I can't remember what the, the the nomenclature is. What else am I excited by? Oh, Santos Dumont, Andy. Oh yes, yes. Frothing for this. Uh, yeah. th- three new sort of va- dial variations, mm-hmm. but with coloured Arabic, uh, sorry, Roman numerals matching the strap. So, yeah, you know, there's a red, there's a blue, there's a green paired with you know steel or white gold. Or yellow uh, gold. Yellow and rose gold, respectively. They look hot. Well, the thing here for me is the dial is actually sort of like a beige. So you've got yeah. this lovely kind of forest green, a really kind of nice blue, and then this burgundy that Cartier have really been, you know, touching on lately applied to like a beige dial. And so it's, uh, I don't know if it's like, it just feels like so, I want to say that it's like a 90s colorway. Like I love it. I love this so much. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna have to pull a pin in the rest of Cartier because a I haven't seen it. Yeah, there's so much to talk about there that I think mm. we can just you know dedicate some proper time to it later. Mm-hmm. Uh, and mm-hmm. also, I don't know if you can tell, but my voice is cooked. <laughs> you need some water. <laughs> need some coffee. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I gotta I gotta hit the road. Like this is the the reality of uh, podcasting remotely. Um, I'm gonna have to sort of run off to my first appointment, which is you'll be excited for this, Andy. Mm-hmm. Uh, a Lagenzern Odysseus chronograph. That's their focus this year. It's just the one release, right? Just the one watch, limited edition. Be a short meeting. Pieces. Should be a short <laughs> meeting. All right, Felix. Well, <laughs> thanks for jumping on a call with me. Thank you to Tag Hoyer for sponsoring today's episode. We're going to continue to dive me, into. Really? Yeah, for Geneva. having Felix. Um, we're going to keep diving into their models uh, over the coming weeks, as uh, well as a kind of a recap on Felix's next few days at the, at the fair. He's also recording some interviews on the ground. So, you know, be sure to stay around for that. Jump in our Discord. It's where you get Felix's uncut and unfiltered takes on things, his images. Uh, Felix, what's our Instagram and email? Uh, ot.podcast. Uh, email is ot.podcast at gmail.com. Our TikTok is, I think, OT the podcast. Uh, I love it. We'll have some pretty solid show notes, um, but they'll also be pretty um, light on because Felix is overseas. Uh, all right, we'll see you next week. Who's writing them? Are you writing them or am I writing them? Chat GPT is going to do this. <laughs> Turn this PowerPoint <laughs> into shadows. Awesome. I love it. I love it. All right, Felix, enjoy your day. See you later, guys. <laughs>